on the Sundays since Easter, and this is the, the fourth of those Sundays, including Easter Sunday, we've been focusing on the message that the early church proclaimed about the death and resurrection of Jesus. And we heard that in our opening reading this morning from Peter. So on this fourth Sunday of Easter, we look not just at the content of the message about Jesus, but on the heart of the Jesus who stands at the center of the gospel. Only those who have good shepherd hearts can proclaim with integrity the message about the good shepherd. So what might our readings tell us about the mission of the church and the ministries that are needed today to make disciples of all nations, including the sheep who are not currently of the one flock? Well, firstly, Jesus says, and shows in his life that he's not a hireling who has no love for the sheep but who runs away instead of defending them. For Jesus, his actions speak much louder than his words. In fact, you know, you heard it in the first reading, the heart of the early preaching by the apostles wasn't on the words of Jesus, but on his actions in his death and resurrection. Those key events showed that he was the one by whom the world can be saved from sin. So only, sorry, in the early church, only when people accepted that Jesus was the Savior because of his death and resurrection, were they then able to learn how he taught his followers to live. Sometimes we start looking at the laws rather than starting with who is Jesus. By focusing on his person, Jesus contradicted the Pharisees who taught that keeping the law and the laws was sufficient. But anybody could keep external laws. Loving God with your whole heart and your neighbor as yourself, that comes from the depths of who you are and it comes at a price. So by living in that way, Jesus frees us from the notion that we don't have to compete for God's mercy. The Pharisees had developed a religious system where the world was divided between those who thought they could earn their way into heaven and those who were told they were pathetic failures. Jesus comes with the heart of a shepherd who knows his sheep and gives his life for his flock. Grace is a gift available to all, not a prize for the strong in a competitive race. There have been countless pastors who have generously served God's people, but we also have to acknowledge that in every generation, because of original sin, there have been those who haven't served God's people with the heart of a shepherd. People will love God when the good news is proclaimed with integrity and love. People will despise those who talk the talk but fail to walk the walk. Jesus didn't make that mistake. Secondly, Jesus says he knows his flock and that they know him. Church is about relationships, about building up family, building up the people of God. We can sometimes think that the church is an institution that we have to manage in a changing marketplace, changing the offer that we have. It's not. It's the body of Christ, in St. Paul's words, where everyone is anointed with the Holy Spirit with gifts so that the mission of Christ can be carried on in Derry in 2021. In Christ's church, therefore, there is a radical equality between all the baptized, all of whom are anointed with the Holy Spirit. So church is about building a community of welcome which makes space for all, including those on the fringes to whom Jesus seems to have gone particularly often. A church can have clear laws and strong teaching, but if it is without supportive, respectful, nourishing relationships, it is only a tenuous connection with the Good Shepherd. And in that community of disciples, which is us, there are many different gifts and jobs to be done. Our vocation is to become a saint by using those gifts and talents for the sake of Christ's mission of mercy to the world, to us and then to the world. So we don't decide to follow Christ and then work out what suits us or what parts of Jesus' teaching we'd rather leave aside. There is no pick and mix Christianity in the church of the Good Shepherd. So one of the challenges for the church in our time is to rediscover what the early church knew, that there is a range of ministries in the body of Christ. And no one's entitled to assume that ministry is only for somebody else to do. 
so that they can supply me with my perceived needs. A healthy church won't complain that they ought to get more clergy from somewhere to shore up a religious supply chain. The Church of the Good Shepherd will promote a range of formal and informal ministries so that the whole people of God is built up and that the good news is brought to those who most need it round the world and round the corner. We have the resources in our parishes to be a vibrant church already. The Good Shepherd calls, wants to call us by name. He wants to call all of us by name and not just some of us. And thirdly, among the many vocations in God's people, there is a call to ordained ministry. Yes, some say that remaining unmarried is too tough nowadays and that more would come forward for ordination if things were easier. But the Good Shepherd doesn't bother calling those who want an easy life. Of his own free will, he's prepared to lay down his life for his flock. He expends his life in defending his flock and seeks out those who are not members of that flock. Jesus knows that bringing good news to the poor will cost him dear. He knows from the beginning of his ministry that there's a real temptation to take the easier path. Jesus still calls some to heroic levels of dedication in his service. This week we've been remembering over in the Long Tower Sister Claire Crockett who died five years ago in April 2016. Her story has amazed, struck many people around the world. We have young Carlo Acutis and his picture over here. He's touched many young people as well. The story of Claire Crockett is powerful. It tells us that in God's eyes there is no cheap grace, no simple path, no glamorous path to holiness. God calls some people to give their all crazy though the world might think that to be. But it's only generous good shepherd hearts that can bear witness to the loving good shepherd. If ordained ministry becomes more of a job and less of a self-sacrificing way of life, we've lost the plot. So it seems to me there are these three lessons from today's Good Shepherd Sunday. Jesus acted with integrity. His words echoed what he did. People followed him because he taught through his deeds. Renewal will come for us in the church when our actions speak louder than our words. Only those with generous pastoral hearts can walk in the footsteps of the Good Shepherd. And then we're asked to follow the Christ who knows each of his flock. Pope Francis has been strong on building strong missionary communities. The current emphasis on synodality or on walking together with Christ is not on pandering to democracy or passing cultural fads, but focusing on how to harness our many spirit-given gifts and talents for the mission of the church in today's world. There can't be a missionary church, sorry, there cannot be a missionary church with a strong a sacramental tradition unless we recognize that God calls some to give everything for the sake of the gospel. In a sacramental church, there's always been a need for those whose lives are a sacrament of the Good Shepherd. That's a huge challenge for the world that's seduced into seeking wholeness through self indulgence. But Jesus is the sacrament of the Father's mercy. And he still calls for those who will model themselves on him, the Good Shepherd. A church which thinks it can witness to Jesus without promoting self-sacrificing heroism is only listening to itself and not to Jesus. The Good Shepherd calls us to model his actions as well as his teaching. There will be no renewal if we are not listening to his voice and modeling ourselves on the Good Shepherd.